The plate has been exposed for 10 minutes and now it's been placed in a developer which is really a solvent 10 grams of washing soda to 1 litre of water and that will etch away or it will dissolve away the parts that were protected by the, the black lines on the film and as you can see that's happened quite nicely. Here we have a group of three plates ready for etching. They've been exposed uh, to ultraviolet light and various corrections have had to be made. It's not unusual for, them, for there to be blemishes, little defects. And you can see where that correction has been made with a special pen. And then scratched out again with a needle. So this is a, an interpretation plate for reading a sundial. Uh, with an image of the sundial at the top and uh, the equation of timetable down at the bottom. This is the clock that we've been busy with. And here is another equation of timetable. This time uh, without instructions for reading the dial. Can you see that there are little perspex blocks glued to the surfaces? Uh, etching is done face down and if you put these face down they'll lie on the bottom of the, of the etching tank and that would stop the etching solution actually getting to them. I used to use quite an elaborate contraption to hold them above the surface and then it occurred to me that just sticking on little cubes of perspex with super glue would do the job very well and that allows the etching to run underneath quite freely. The backs of the plates have been stopped out with two coats of ordinary car cellulose paint. I usually use one white coat and then follow that up with a black coat to make sure that I've got full coverage. And then if you look at the edges of the plates, you can see that they've been stopped out with a different colour of cellulose paint. If the plate is oversized like this one, it's not too important, but if you're etching actually to a finished size, then the edges of the plate would be attacked, and that wouldn't look very good. I've spoken about the etchant, and what is it? Well, there you are, ferric chloride which you can obtain from any supplier who supplies materials for making printed circuits. There's quite a large one in colour coats, which I think, as I recall, is called CK Electronics. Or if you look up Mega Electronics on the web, you'll come to their website. And there are the proportions. 17.6 ounces per litre. It comes as... look like small brown dried peas and dissolve in warm water and then make up to one litre when dissolved. Uh, the, the cheap bleach bottles that one gets in supermarkets, thin bleach, I think it's 26, 26p for two litres, so I buy those and then just get rid of the contents. Uh, very good strong bottles. Hexahydrate. It comes in those large containers and one of those, I think uh, two kilograms, something like that. Oh, sorry, two and a half kilograms. And that costs about £16 as I recall. Not wildly well expensive. So now we have three plates all stopped out on the back, that's black paint, uh, lying in the etching tank which is actually a thing called a gastronome uh, made for canteen serveries to serve vegetables from I think. Any polythene container with a flat bottom will do. Uh, it's just a question of getting one the right size. On the right hand side there is the heater, an electric heater uh, these can be bought from Lasky's, especially for immersion in a heating in, a, in an etching tank. Uh, mains voltage, not switched on at the minute because of course it would overheat unless it's covered with etching solution. Uh, and I spoke about the etchant. Just one safety point. First of all, be very careful when you're handling super glue. Uh, I, I stuck my fingers together with it just a little while ago, applying those little plastic cubes. The other safety point is eye protection. Ferric chloride isn't particularly vicious, but you certainly wouldn't want it splashed in your eyes. And uh, you, if you get it on your skin and wash it off, you'll find that your skin is stained orange and has quite an unpleasant smell for a while. So gloves and goggles really, please, when you're handling this stuff. And, and lots, lots of ordinary common sense. So the next time you see this, it will be immersed in ferric chloride. And my first job is to swish the whole thing back and forward to make sure there are no bubbles underneath the plates. And then after that, well, let's see, I'll, we'll begin with that. So there are the three plates with the ferric chloride added. It doesn't need to cover the whole plates as long as it touches the undersides of the face, so that will be quite sufficient. 
and the heater you can't see it's actually buried in the flue just at the corner there you can etch without a heater but it'll take longer with fresh ferric chloride fresh and a heater functioning you'll get very deep etching in four hours every 15 minutes or so I just have to tilt the dish it's hard to actually do this and film at the same time but I just tilt it gently back and forward to make sure that the the fresh solution is presented to the interface but do make sure that it's that all of the plates are actually in contact and particularly air bubbles underneath otherwise you'll get areas that haven't been etched having to agitate the dish uh, every 15 minutes for four hours or so or longer if you're using uh, used ferric that's not quite so strong for single plates I made this little device which has a synchronous motor driving a cam and just a, a miniature ball bearing there against a spring and that thing tilts 60 times every minute so you can just go away and go shopping and leave it to get on with it really which is rather nice you can probably see that in this shot the plates have changed position that's because after about an hour I will take them out and look at them and make sure that every part of every line is actually etching sometimes a little bit of resist gets left in one of the lines so the plate has to be rinsed and scratched out with a needle to get it etching those three were fine the other reason is it's not a good idea to have the plate nearest to the heater for the whole of the etching process because that particular bit of uh, etching will be, will be warmer than the rest and perhaps you might get uneven etching so I swap them around every now and then as a matter of course the clock face has been etched <coughs> and here it is still covered with resist looking rather scruffy straight from the etch tank so now uh, you can see where the little plastic blocks have been knocked off the spacer blocks so now it has to have the etch resist removed and we do that by putting it in a bath of very strong washing soda a saturated solution of washing soda here's the plate submerged in a, a bath of, of stripper which is as we say extra strong saturated solution of ordinary washing soda sorry about the shadow it's just the way the daylight's falling on it it'll be there for about 20 minutes and in 20 minutes time the coating of resist will just float off the surface uh, and can be just simply washed away so now we can see that the resist film after about 20 minutes has all wrinkled up and if I just rock the dish from side to side you'll see it come off it's still attached around the edges where the the resist paint, the orange paint was placed in place so the thing needs cleaning up and we'll see how successful we've been so here's the plate with the resist removed and the first clean up it will now need filling and I'll go in closer so you can get some idea of the depth of the etching so here we have a finished plate the numerals and lines have all been filled with black paint black cellulose that is and after about 20 minutes or so scraped off with an old credit card and then just some fine abrasion uh, in the same direction as the original marks and now it needs a final clean up the outside line and the inside line of course are just cutting guides so they're a bit ragged but it doesn't really matter so there we are one photo etched clock plate clock tile Just to give some idea of the scope of this process, this is a sundial that was etched just a few days ago alongside its gnomon, which was a water jet cut from a slab of phosphor bronze and then the sides were recessed on the milling machine and then finished by hand. The long tenon will pass right through the dial uh, into the masonry underneath. There's a pound coin there for comparison. The location is concealed because the client doesn't want anyone to know where it's going. Uh, many sundials get stolen these days. All drawn on the computer using Adobe Illustrator and then downloaded to a film. <laughs>